Hello everyone, I'm Captain Courageous and I review old school modules and games and talk about how you might use them in your current campaigns. This week I'm going to start one of the more ambitious reviews I've ever done and that's to review the massive tome City of Brass from Fraud God Games. There are two versions of this campaign adventure, an old school version for the Swords and Wizardry rules set from Frog God Game that comes in at around 442 pages, and a 5th edition version for Wizards of the Coast and the Dungeons and Dragons game, which comes in at around 554 pages. The campaign itself is actually a reprint from the earlier 2007 sourcebook. But this latest version has been greatly expanded, adding 120,000 words more in material, according to the module's author, Casey Christofferson. The module is divided up into three major sections. Book one is the introductory material, The Cult of the Burning One, and covers the initial five adventures that lead the heroes to the fabled city in the title. Book two, The City of Brass, is primarily a source book composed of eight chapters covering the city itself, factions within the city, and notable non-player characters. Book three, Tales of Brass, is another 15 chapters that details greatly specific locations of note within the city that are actually site-based adventures themselves. So as you can see, this is really a massive undertaking, and to give this work its due, I simply cannot cover it all in one video. So like the book, this review will be in three parts with each video covering a major section. This video will cover book one, The Burning One, as well as discuss the interview I did with Casey Christofferson over Facebook Messenger. Lots and lots to discuss, so get yourself a beverage and snacks, and let's get started. Spoiler warning, I will be giving away some of the secrets of the module here, but nothing too major. However, if you're a player, you may want to direct your game master to this video. Still with me? Okay, let's get started. In 1979, the first edition Dungeon Master's Guide was released. The cover of that tome is pretty iconic to Dungeons & Dragons in general, but what the cover depicted stirred imaginations, especially since an evocative description of the scene was given at the bottom of the foreword. The book cover painting shows an encounter between three adventurers and an afrit on the elemental plane of fire. The fabled city of brass can be seen floating over a flame-swept sea of oil. The City of Brass is, of course, one of the 1001 tales told by Sherazad to the Persian King Shear in the classic tales of the Arabian Nights. In the D&D multiverse, the City of Brass is legendary, residing on the elemental plane of fire. The city has been mentioned in many source books over the decades, with some descriptions given here and there and even a source book or two. In 2003, Jeff Knight and Rob Kuntz released Sir Rabelar's City of Brass for Kenzer and Company's Hackmaster game, but nothing on the scale of what Necromancer Games released in 2007. A three-volume set, Book 1, The City of Brass, Book 2, Tales of Brass, 1001 Afrit Knights, and Book 3, Secrets of the Brazen Throne. The cover to that original release was a homage to the original David Sutherland work for the first edition Dungeon Master's Guide. Earlier in 2019, Frog God Games initiated a Kickstarter to re-release the Necromancer Games classic, the 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons game, and Swords and & Wizardry, and adding over 120,000 words of new material this was successfully completed in May 2019, raising over $70,000. The PDF and hardcover is now available from the Frog God Games website. The PDF is $49.99, or the hardcover and PDF together are $100. Available for either Swords and Wizardry or 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. Chapters 1 and 2 delve specifically into an overview of the City of Brass and its history. Chapter 1 is a general overview of the adventure presented, adapting them to an existing campaign or using the Frog God Games campaign setting, The Lost Lands. I would have liked a bit more detail to the overarching plot of the module, as I feel perhaps too much is left hidden behind text walls 
in the many chapters that follow, a detailed chapter-by-chapter -chapter breakdown and a rundown of the major NPCs and what chapter they can be encountered in would have been useful in this first chapter. Chapter 2 goes into the long history of the City of Brass and its origins. The first adventure, Lornadain the Secret Flame, takes place in Frog God game setting The Lost Lands, but is adaptable to any setting. The first adventure is one of investigation, specifically missing young people in the small barony of Lornadain. The adventure does a great job of providing plot hooks to connect the characters to the starting adventure. They could be native to the region, relatives of one of the missing persons, or perhaps investigators hired by merchants to investigate the disappearances. The characters could just be passing through or stumble upon the crime scenes detailed in the adventure. A lovely map of the Barony of Lorna Dane is provided. And this is all well and good, but my first little nitpick, and I really kind of annoys me when module designers do this, and that's leave the details of the overall plot adventure path hidden in the text of the adventure. I am the referee. The entire details of the plot, who's involved, why fours, and such, all needs to be laid out plainly at the very beginning of the module. As it stands, however, uncovering the plot and adventure path of the module requires the referee to read through all the entries of the adventure thoroughly in order to uncover the story, who the major NPCs are, and so on, which is one of the reasons it's taken me so long to get to this review. On the plus side, unlike the meandering mess, Princes of the Apocalypse, which leaves the whereabouts and fate of the Marabar delegation to discovery by the DM in various chapters hidden within the text body, the fate of the kidnapped villagers of Lorna Dane is given in great details, so kudos for that. Next, the village of Lorna Dane is detailed and the story moves along as an investigation and overland exploration scenario. Walls of text are provided that the referee must log through to uncover the gist of what's happening in the village. Sheriff Bolin is currently in conflict with the villagers as he's been unable to uncover the whereabouts of the missing children and it's indicated in the text that the sheriff is simply not up to the task of uncovering the mystery, primarily being a glorified tax collector. As the characters explore the area, they can uncover rumors that might help them in solving the mystery, and there's a classic roll a d20 rumors table with a neat little twist. The referee rolls a d20 and gives all the information under the target number. Characters can improve their information by spending gold at the War Mallard Inn, gaining a plus one for every five gold pieces spent. In the end, the missing person's plot turns out to be simply a MacGuffin to move the story forward. The next adventure, Chapter 4, is Freegate, the Brazen Spire. This is an adventure for third-level characters arriving in Freegate in pursuit of kidnapped villagers. The heroes arrive in Freegate and end up involving themselves in the local politics. There, they discover that a cult is taking hold, and there is a problem with the leadership there, apparently not addressing the problem. The adventure leads to the headquarters of the Burning One, the Brazen Spire, in a confrontation with the cult's leadership. A lovely map of Freegate City is provided, as well as maps of other locales, including the Brazen Spire. I'd also like to mention that the module does a great job of guiding the DM through the various sections with sidebars that make suggestions and tips on how to run the various encounters, as well as how the NPCs will react to the PCs' incursions. There's a lot of intrigue, and the NPCs are well fleshed out with motivations and goals to further help the DM moderate their actions. Chapter 5 is a series of short adventures designed to move the characters from the Lost Lands, which is the default setting of the Kingdom of Numida, to the continent of Libinos, and ultimately the City of Brass. Chapter 6, Numida, the Caliphate of Flames, continues the intrigue and escalates the tensions as the major city of Curtius collapses into religious war. Social norms and existing governmental controls have utterly eroded. Here is an opportunity for a lot of great role-playing, street-level fighting, and supernatural encounters as chaos and madness overtakes the city. As with other chapters, the maps provided are colorful and very well done, and there's some great artwork as well. Finally, in Chapter 7, The Path of the Prophet allows the characters to uncover 
a plainer gait as they make their way through the desert kingdom of Numidia, whereby they can make their way to the plain of molten skies and ultimately the legendary city of brass. Each of these chapters is well written and contains plot hooks to draw the characters into each adventure. So it is not necessary to play out every single adventure presented, though, given the high quality of the material, it might seem a shame not to do so. However, if you are introducing the City of Brass into an already existing campaign, it might be necessary to skip some of the early low-level adventures. Overall, these beginning chapters offer several months of great gaming and role-playing. Adapting this to your existing campaign will require you to either change the names of some of the gods presented, or if you don't have a fully developed Arabian setting already in your campaign, you could just adapt the material herein to your own world. Or, as Frog God Games probably hopes, you'll simply use their Lost Lands setting. The amount of detail provided here does not require a separate purchase, but of course the quality of the material herein certainly might inspire further interest, especially since this is also the setting of Fraud God Games' other major adventures such as Rappin Ethic. In my conversation with Casey Christofferson, he mentioned a preference for running this using Swords and Wizardry, though using 5th edition's Dungeons & Dragons was fine. It just seemed that certain things flowed better using an old school rule set and after reading through this adventure, I must concur. Certainly given the old school origins of the setting, that makes perfect sense. While one might initially consider this adventure a Holy Arabian Nights style campaign, Casey was quick to point out that this was not the case. In his own words, he said he considered it more akin to Sinbad meets Flash Gordon with some Godzilla thrown in, and I must concur. This is very much in the vein of old school Greyhawk adventures such as Against the Giants, the Slave Lord series, and Vault of the Drow. Casey said he did a year of research before writing this adventure and that much of the new material spawned from unrealized adventures and quests that never materialized while actually running the campaign. This setting was a labor of love and a homage to those great campaigns that we played as kids in the early days of D&D, and as I read through this massive volume, I couldn't help but reminisce about such things myself. From the page layout to the outstanding artwork and the massive storyline, this is certainly a tome that will take up months of playtime and provide that will memorable adventures that will be talked about years after their completion. In my opinion, this begs to just be a new campaign, and my suggestion is that the Game Master endeavor to connect the PCs to the setting. Give them homes in Lornadane or the city of Curtius. Connect them to the missing villagers. Clerics and paladins make great classes to involve here, as they will be especially alarmed about the religious developments happening in the kingdom of Numida. Anything that the Game Master can do to connect the PCs to the setting will certainly help in inspiring them to see this quest through its completion in the legendary City of Brass. In part two of this review, I'll cover book two, The City of Brass, and its eight chapters. And in part three, I'll go over book three, Tales of Brass, which goes into detail on 15 specific locales within the city. Also in part three, I will give my D20 review of the module, so look for that. I also have some of my more traditional old school module reviews coming up as well. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and click the little bell for other reviews like this one. Consider checking out the channel's Facebook page and becoming a Patreon. The links are in the description. As always, my friends, may your D20 roll true and game on.